one of the ways it affects our games is it, it allows us as the GMs to really control the pacing. And also, if we want to make things more difficult for our players, we kind of know that they're going to anticipate, you know, not having a lot of combat just because that's how our games go. Mm -hmm. And for us to ratchet that up, all we have to do is throw another combat in. And all of a sudden, you know, they have to really think about how they're going to do things. Maybe they need to do a tactical withdrawal to, to regroup in this case, or they have to come up with better tactics using the, the resources available to them. I'm Nerdarchist Ted. And I'm Nerdarchist Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Nerdarchy, Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. All right, looks like we're doing another Nerdarchy Way video. What, what are we talking about today? Yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about playing D&D the Nerdarchy Way, to, and today we're going to be talking about light combat in your games because that's kind of how we run ours now uh we've got like three pillars of the nerdarchy way mm -hmm. so that's improv or reactionary dming and using player agency as a cornerstone of the game are the other two this one is essentially using less combat in D, &D. yeah so less emphasis, less emphasis of combat let's get into that let's talk about that and even you know like how it kind of came about so i feel like as long as we've been gaming together, we've had plenty of sessions where they've been nothing but combat. But we've also had plenty of sessions where like we get heavy into, you know, the RP and the story, and we feel like a combat has been like shoehorned in just to kind of cover the three pillars. Yeah, so over the years, you know, we've run the gamut as to, like, we've had sessions with no combat at all. It's just been role-playing, exploration, and so social interactions, to it's like, all right, all we're going to do is one big fight. That is the whole session, um, you know, mixed in. And we've kind of settled in this place where we generally run one to three combats per session. Um, and it's been like this since we started playing 5e D&D. &D. Uh, and, like, honestly, we ge ten generally tend to do one in combat counter per session, more, you know, more so than the two or three. It really throws our players through the, two, through the loop if we do the two or three, especially in the same day. Right. Right? Like, and it's not being spread out. So, I mean, this is, is going to have different effects on your games. One specific example, I was running a game, and very often the players were aware we do one combat a session. It's typically... There's always a long rest in between. So players have the ability to just go Nova every every combat. That's just what happens. So they went into a tower. They fought a whole bunch of things. They went up to the second level. There was more stuff to fight. It was beginning to tax them. They got to the third level, which was the third and final layer of the thing. And there were harder bosses or harder fight up there than everything else. And most of their resources had been expended and they didn't know really they really didn't know what to do like i could have with what i had there could have w wiped them out but i had a story like they were supposed to win this was a you know essentially like one of three pieces of an ongoing story and there was an evil wizard involved this was his clone he wanted to lose to give them cursed magic items so he let them de defeat them to win the treasure but it, it definitely leads this this case of if the players are aware that you're going to typically do this and you break that norm, they don't know what to do. Even does, experienced players. It does make it more difficult. I will say my character had no problems at all because I was playing a rogue <laughs> and they never run out of anything. <laughs> yes. Your action, fire crossbow. Reload crossbow. Fire crossbow. Not hard to do. Well, I'd be a skill monkey. It's, that's kind of what rogues do. <laughs> Completely. You know, rogue, rogues are, you know, one of the best classes in, in 5e. But yeah, you, you know, that that is definitely true. Like, one of the ways it affects our games is it, it allows us as the GMs to really control the pacing. And also, if we want to make things more difficult for our players, we kind of know that they're going to anticipate, you know, not having a lot of combat just because that's how our games go. Mm -hmm. And for us to ratchet that up, all we have to do is throw another combat in. And all of a sudden, you know, they have to really think about how they're going to do things. Maybe they need to do a tactical withdrawal to, to regroup in this case, or they have to come up with better tactics using the, the resources available to them. Uh, it, it makes the play style interesting because while you can usually rely on that one, two, maybe three encounters over the course of a session, 
you don't always want to just be like, well, let me let me nuke everything in, in my path. And then when you get to the harder encounter of the session of the day, then it's like, oh, now what do I do? This is going to be harder because I've already used my fireball, lightning bolt, whatever. So I guess the, the other thing is to, to talk about is how this how does this affect or hurt certain character classes? So here here's the you know the real stitch of it. If you run one combat per day, the characters who are essentially fueled off of a short rest, like your warlock or, you know, whatnot. Your monk, warlock monk. The monk still, you know, still is going to be okay. But yeah, I can I can see how the monk shines with, you know, getting access to just his stuff back, his, his key points back off of a short rest. But he's not less powerful. Um, so it, it does make them shine less. You know, over the course of you know the long rest, whereas the 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 the, the, the characters like full spellcasters getting access to all of their spell slots back over a long rest, those characters tend to do better because they've got more powerful resources that are refilled before every combat. Yeah, and if they're not managing them, you know, they they just you know they're going to outshine everyone really. Um, and then, you know, where the Warlocks thing is, like, if they get the rest, they get to keep doing their things over and over again. So, yeah, that kind of hurts. Now, you know, the reason why we have less combats in our games is it's not because we hate combat in d d It's just that we really enjoy the exploration and interaction pillars of the game as well. So we tend to spend more time on those. Uh, there will be certain, there will be some times when we break the norms even for our own games. And there is more combat based on, generally based on story elements that have happened, you know, and and like, you know, perhaps we have to go into a dungeon, which isn't something we do a lot of. Uh -huh. We don't do big dungeons. But, you know, something in some particular circumstance in the game may cause that. And then we'll revert to a play style where there is a lot more combats encounters as opposed to role play encounters or exploration. You know, now if you're running, as we used to do in the past, playing every week with the same group and playing a particular campaign for years, doing the, the large dungeon that takes four to five sessions to get through is, is a thing that we've done many times and, you know, is still a great aspect of the game. It's pretty much, you know, you kick in the door, you kill the monster, you take the treasure, you move on. And maybe once a session or once, once every other session, you throw in some kind of social thing to, to kind of you know, scratch that itch. But for the most part, it's exploration and combat. But when you're not running that kind of style, the games we run now, we play once a month and we tend to run like a 12 to 18 session storyline. You can't have five sessions in a dungeon and, and tell the same kind of story. So more time has to pass. Smaller dungeons need to be a thing. That means a dungeon is going to have one to three encounters and is wrapped up in a single session. Yeah, and that's just kind of what our, our group kind of enjoys. And like Ted said, uh, a big part of that is the fact that we we actually both play in a bunch of games together, but they're monthly games where the rest of the group dynamic is a lot different because we found it's easier to find people that can commit to one day a month than every Saturday or three Saturdays out of the month. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's very little crossover in those groups other than me and Ted. Yeah, and you know, it's for us that works and it allows us to explore a different dynamic. We've talked about this in other videos. Dave runs a game, I run a game, and then the last group is, you know, a you know, we change it up the the game as well as the GM rotates, and we generally are not playing D. &D. Yeah, you know, so we found that that's what works with our group and it's dictated how we play the game. So if you happen to like this video, others like it, as well as all the great content over on nerdarchy.com, why not come check us out on Patreon and throw us some support there. Articles like make your D&D combat action-packed with action options. If you're looking for some other ways to kind of help Nerdarchy out, why not come over to nerdarchy.com and check out our partner page. Grab products with discounts ranging from 20 to 25% off, Nerdarchy is proud to count a variety of co companies as partners. Here you'll find our current partners along with special offers and deals they've created for us to share with you. Some of our partners offer affiliate programs and using these links may result in a small commission for Nerdarchy. Let us know what you think about the way we run D&D games down in the comments below. Share how you do it in your games, combat heavy, combat light. Let us know and share with the Nerdarchy community. 
If you want to help Nerdarchy appease that YouTube algorithm, why not do all those cool things like like, share, subscribe, go ahead and click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Quick reminder, we drop new videos here on the channel every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but you can't wait till then, no worries. Come on back, we got you covered up here with how to play D&D the Nerdarchy way, player agency. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.